Professor Valley, I really enjoyed your interview with Professor Dennis Noble. Wow, from one distinguished scientist to another, I learned a lot. But now my interview will be for general public, who, okay. including people who don't know anything about chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, could you briefly tell us about your research? using a couple of sentences or something or and its practical applications? Okay, I'll give it a try. So I work in a chemistry department, but my research is uh, very multidisciplinary. So we do chemistry, we do some biology, we do a bit of physics, a bit of engineering, and we bring all of these things together to study membrane proteins, which are proteins that are <coughs> are found in the surfaces of our cells. So these proteins um, uh, have a lot of intrinsic interest in biology, but they also have a lot of practical um, applications as well. So just as people have um, engineered antibodies and enzymes in biotechnology, we've been doing that with membrane proteins. And one of the first things we did was convert them into sensors. So by um, altering these proteins, we could um, convert them to sensors for a very wide variety of different um, atoms, ions, and molecules. So uh, metal ions, small organic molecules that might be drug molecules, for example, and the kinds of molecules that we find in our cells, sugars, proteins, DNA, uh, and so on. And one of the really special things about our sensors um, is that they work at the single molecule level. They detect individual molecules, so they're um, the, really the most sensitive um, class of sensors that you, you could imagine. And um, stemming from that work, um, there'd been an idea around that one might be able to sequence single molecules of DNA rather than um, have to use large amounts of DNA or amplified DNA for sequencing. So uh, potentially you m might be able to sequence the DNA from an individual cell, uh, for example. And uh, in 2005, I set up a company called Oxford Nanopore, and Oxford Nanopore have worked on this very intensively over the last decade. And they have been able to use the protein pores that we originally used for sensing small molecules now to um, sequence DNA. So they can sequence DNA at a rate of a few milliseconds per base. So this is a very cheap, a very rapid method. And also it's a portable method. The device that they've developed is, is the size of a phone, a very small um, device that you could uh, take into the field if you were a biologist or you could have it at an airport if you worked in immigration, for example. Well, actually, chemistry research and the business project sounds very interesting. Mm. You studied at Oxford and you also studied and worked in the US. What made you to decide to come back to Oxford after uh, working and studying in the US for a long time? Well, a lot of people end up going back to Oxford. I think the attractions for um, each person may be different. But I, yes, I was an undergraduate here, and I started my so-called fourth year in chemistry, which is called the part two year. And um, I began that here, and then my supervisor moved to Harvard University, and the entire research group moved there. So I finished my PhD in the States, and then, uh, basically, I stayed there for 30 years until 2003, working um, first as a graduate student, then as a postdoc, uh, and then um, a, a, as a professor at various different institutions. Then in 2003, um, the chemistry department here um, were building a new building, the building that we're sitting in now, and I got a call saying, uh, would I look, like to look at the possibility of, of coming back and being a, a professor in this new building? And um, I did that, and the building looked wonderful, and, um, and all the conditions of moving and so on looked wonderful. But I think w when you do move, usually um, y 
you, things work out for different reasons to, to what you expect. And I, it's been very nice working in this building, but uh, for me, that the best part of Oxford has been really the spectacular students and postdocs um, that I've been able to have in my lab or to um, teach as undergraduates. Well, actually, FRS is a great honor for scientists. How did you feel when you were elected as a fellow of uh, Royal Society? Well, it's, it's an honor, but you know, I have to say it's really based not on your own success, it's really based on the success of um, your research, which in turn is based on all the people that have been in your research group. So um, I, I see this as an honor for the graduate students and, and uh, postdocs and other people that have been in my research group, and not only um, have they worked in my lab, but you know, quite honestly, they've come up with a lot of the ideas that we've worked on as well. So this is really a, a kind of research co community, a research group. And um, when you are lucky enough to get an honor, it, it really is for the whole group, not, not for an individual. Right. Um, any tips for young people interested in careers in chemistry? Uh, what kind of, I mean, either in academia or in industry? Well, academia is what I know about. Um, it's quite tough. Um, I think you've really got to want to do it. It's not something for dilettantes, right? So I think you've got to be totally committed to an academic career. And obviously you have to work hard and think hard but I think more than anything, the, the commitment is, is really important. If you have any doubts about doing it, there are a lot more, there are a lot of ways of earning a lot more money uh, quickly. And um, I think you've got to have this um, real desire to do science and, and learn about new things and to be able to, um, well, particularly at a place like Oxford, the teaching is also very important too. So the, and be, um, enjoy teaching undergraduates as well as doing research. Okay, finally, how do you see Jeff? Well, I don't know. My, my favorite leisure activity is actually cooking. So really? You, so you might argue that that's uh, not really switching off. But nowadays, I don't do much chemistry in, or any chemistry in the lab anymore. So maybe it's a substitute for working in the lab. I, I spend most of my time writing grant proposals and papers uh, and so on. So probably that's, that's where that comes from. Well, actually, Professor Stanis Noble uh, kept saying that cooking is a science. So probably you should have another interview with him. Yeah, One we should, day for we Voices should, uh, from Oxford. Or we could have a cook-off or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very much. Right. Yeah, Thanks very much. Thank you.